spies are boring. A special season of spy stories in celebration of Canada Day 2021. Join us for 10 daily episodes as we explore the world of espionage in Canada. Season starts July 1st. Welcome to Canadian Politics is Boring! Jesse. Reese. I thought we should start this episode. You know, um, you know, sometimes you can use, I think we've talked about in past episodes, you can use music to influence uh, how people feel. So hang on, I've got a track I want to play while we do our intro. Just to make, just to make people. Do you want to do the intro over this music, whatever this is? Just so people know that this is a fun show. Hang on. (laughs) Okay. Hang on. I won't play. Come on. This is fascinating. No, oh. we're losing listeners by the second. No, we're, we're not. They're gonna love we're this. We're throwing their iPads on the ground and stomping on them in fury. Don't do that. Hang on. There we go. Hello and welcome to Canadian <laughs> politics is boring. I'm <laughs> Reese Waters, and I'm Jesse Hurley. <laughs> You're in for a, a super fun show. Oh my god, it's so much fun. Uh, we've got uh, elephants on fire. We've got um, no pants. Games. No pants. No, no pants. pants. Uh, a, a tiny car that thirty people will fit in. Uh, Gasoline and matches. And uh, maybe even an unlicensed nuclear device. What? There we go. Do you think that'll work? <laughs> I mean, if we're if we're trying to switch things up, then. Because you, yeah. you said la- the last episode wasn't as funny, it was interesting, but it wasn't as much comedy. I thought we could make people feel the joy more with that music. <laughs> Even though we felt like kind of 1930s clowns. <laughs> That's what I was picturing, like we were yeah. in a circus tent. Yeah. <laughs> did you like it? I did. I don't know if we should... Con- <laughs> Are we doing it again? Welcome to Canadian politics. It's boring. To the, the big <laughs> top. And this is where we've got elephants. We've got... Men Sad with people. beards. With men with men with beards. <laughs> <laughs> the Three legged small, dogs. The Six world's smallest cats. cat. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I, I like how you just catch me off guard with that. <laughs> <laughs> when will the fun music come in? Nobody knows. Um, uh, Jesse, I got. I think. I think we talked about this before with an episode, but I, I want to get your opinion on. Uh, where do you stand on uh, aliens and alien abduction? Where do I stand on aliens and alien abduction? I mean, yeah. it's not very nice. We shouldn't do it. <laughs> I think any form of abduction is not nice. Right, yeah. Whether, um, it, you know, whether it's uh, human or alien. I believe the chances of aliens existing in the universe, 100%. I believe the chances of aliens having visited us probably closer to 20%. I believe aliens having abducted people, probably around 5 to 10%. What about the anal probes? Where'd you start on anal probes? Are we talking aliens here or just... <laughs> <laughs> just Yeah, just aliens. <laughs> I mean, we all know the other ones exist, but I'm talking about alien ones. Yeah, to, to like, I don't know about you, but if I'm... Okay, let's think about this for a second, okay? You're in a... We're, let's say it's thousand years in the future no let's that's, let's do 200 years in the future or something and and we are an advanced species and we were able to travel into other light system uh you know solar systems and we come across <laughs> a planet that has a fairly like it's you know our technology is similar to what we are now and we we observe them from up space we're like uh, up in space and we're like oh wow that's they're really neat. They don't have, uh, they don't, I mean, they've got some rudimentary space travel. I wonder so like, what they look well, like on the inside. Yeah, like, what are the, what's, <laughs> how much shit can we shove in their asses? Like, that's okay. not, no, I do not believe anal, <laughs> alien, ape, no, sorry, this is not, like, hey, let's, hey, let's go get some and just shove shit up their ass and send them back home. It'll confuse the fuck out of people. Yeah. And no one will believe them. Exactly. No one. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon it's like, an, like, a, like a college initiation. They fly to, a, a, they fly to Earth. <laughs> an anally probe uh, one of the one of the uh, the local humans 
Bobby, if you want to get into the frat house, you exactly. gotta fly to the local, the local, pla- <laughs> the local like closest planet, the closest solar system where they don't know aliens exist, and shove these fifteen pencils up different asses, and you'll be in. Yeah, that's <laughs> exactly. And you get a, you get the the ring with a logo on. You get all this stuff. That's the good news. <laughs> and a necklace with fifteen smelly pencils. Yeah. Around it, yeah. So th- this is this is what this episode is getting to. So this episode is called "When Canada Built a Flying Saucer." Okay. Um, and I kind of got into this in a roundabout way, but did I don't know if you saw recently there was a uh, in the news, and this is based on a Vice article that basically the Canadian military has been encountering UFOs for decades. Um, did we admit it for decades? Yeah. So because we all, the United States only recently admitted that there are UFOs. And out this there. is kind of similar. This and when they say like, UFOs, they mean unidentified flying objects. Yeah, they don't they mean don't they, mean, they, didn't, they don't mean aliens. aliens. Yeah. There's no probes. There's none of that in this. This is just them, the military admitting they're seeing stuff they can't explain. Um, but also, this seventy years worth of the Canadian Armed Forces seeing stuff that they can't explain, such as a large tubular object being tracked by radar in 2002. Um, so basically, like a. a, a the world's largest, fastest Pringles tube, um, <laughs> a white spot turning blue and red, uh, seen traveling in a zigzag formation. Even that, are they, are they drunk? What? There's no benefit to flying in a zigzag zigzag formation. Well, I mean, and if I, they if they think that people are tracking them and looking for them, but that was in 1978, and then an orange pulsating symmetrical light uh, witnessed speeding over an auto over Ottawa by a pair of Air Force officers in March 1950. So. What they're saying is, is that UFO sightings by the military have been going on since the fifties, um, and that they've been recording them. Uh, and actually, they started to, they, the they they started to kind of basically uh, come up with ways of uh, describing them and coming up with like classifying them in a sense because they were seeing tubes and lights and all these different shapes that they've actually been talking about for like fifty years, which we're I found fascinating. About Can- Canadian. Canadian military. This is separate from the American military. Um, But a spokesperson from Canada's Department of National Defense told Vice that um, they're not aware of any Canadian nexus or participation in the U.S. Department of Defense UFO study at this time, nor does the Canadian Armed Forces have a unit dedicated to investigating UFOs. But I think think (laughs) that would be a great comedy TV show. Oh, yeah. Did you think? Yeah. Maybe that's what Manitoba Knights should be. This sort of investigating UFO based crime. Oh, that's cool. Oh, I like that. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. There that's we go. Good. So if you're if yeah. you if you've got money and you work for a channel or something, then uh, let's do that. But anyway, there's, there's our pitch. Yeah, you know how to get all of us. Yep, we'll make you but millions. When I was looking at this story, I came across uh, the fact that Canada actually built a flying saucer. Okay, um, like, we, I, don't, we, we, I don't know what you mean by that. Like, do you mean because we could just like build a disc, a, round, a disc, like yeah, a we could round build a disc, disc that could fly? That could fly. Yeah. Oh. Oh. What? Um, kind okay. of like in, in any direction. <clears throat> so you remember we did what? this, and this was Avro. You know the, the company that built the the arrow that we did the episode on. I don't know the company, but yeah, I, I we, remember you talking yeah. about it. So the Canada's flying saucer was called the Avro Canada V79 Avro car, which is a terrible up. name for a flying saucer. Avro, what is it? I'm looking it up. The V79 Avro car. If anybody wants to look it up, it, it is a flying saucer. Oh, wow, it is too. See? Wow, that's crazy. Um, I mean, it didn't work, but... <laughs> <laughs> This is, play, this is where you play the music again. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. The Canadian flying saucer that didn't work. There we go. Whoopsie. Whoopsie. So, um, the, <laughs> the 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 Avro car exploited the the. Have you ever heard of the Coander effect? Another good name for a TV show. <laughs> It um, rolls right off the tongue. No, so have you ever been to like a kid's science like museum and they always have like a, a jet of air and there's a ball floating in the air on the jet yeah. of air? Is that, that's the Coanda effect. So it, it lift, lift and thrust from a turbo rotor blow an exhaust out of the rim of the disc shaped aircraft in the air. It would have resembled a flying saucer as the air kind of, because the shape needed to go around the saucer to lift it. The Coanda effect is the tendency of a fluid jet to stay attached to a convex surface or something. 
Uh, and it's named after a Romanian inventor, Henry Coanda, who described it as the tendency... What's his name? Henry Coanda, who okay. came up with the Coanda effect. Um, yeah. I don't so fully it, understand it. I don't understand it. Air, air shoots out and lifts it up, in, <laughs> in short. Um, so uh, the Avro car was they had a, you know people say blue sky thinking they the avro had a a blue skies research no project. i've never heard what's blue sky thinking i've never heard there's like oh there's no limits to blue sky thinking never so heard had, this before in my life you know, it's, it's something uh wankers say but um <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking, i think i've said it once or twice. Anyway, the um the, the, the there was this guy called uh jack frost who was a uh, a British designer who was working? He joined Avro Canada in 1947. He was kind of like almost like a Tony Stark kind of maverick military de- like designer. He had like um, he he'd been the chief designer on the um, the Arrow project, for instance. This was in the 50s. I'm this was in the this was in like late 40s, early 50s. So, so this is so, the 50s version of of yeah. Elon Musk, basically. Yeah, yeah. Well, Elon Musk, but actually smart. <laughs> rather than taking credit for other people's work. I'm joking. Does he do that? I don't know. Probably. I don't think he does. I've never no, heard no, no, that. I didn't want to say no, anything no. in case it's true. But like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> From what I understand, Elon Musk doesn't is, his is dad, a his dad own, Doesn't his dad own an iron, uh, and a, a, like a diamond mine or something? He wanted to, uh, I don't know about that, but I, I, I did read a story once of when Elon, again, I, I don't, please uh, don't beat me up if I get this wrong, uh, general public. Who are listening to this but he wanted to create a, a rocket that could f- transport the public back and forth and he went and talked to this this large corporation and and they basically were like that's impossible we can't do this it's not it's not physically possible whatever and he's like oh okay that's weird thanks for nothing i guess and he gets back on his jet with his friends or not his friends his colleagues his work colleagues whatever and he takes out like a laptop and a piece of paper and a pen and on the jet ride home he does the math and he figures it out it's like oh yeah no this is very possible very physically possible and economically feasible and check it out here's my here's my proof and he showed it to them and they're like holy fuck and this is so yeah it's like a beautiful mind moment (laughs) it sounds made up though it does sound made up doesn't it it sounds too good to be true but i mean every story about elon musk sounds made up you know like (laughs) i think but i think he's culturing like a he's he's trying to be like that kind of Tony Stark, he's 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 creating a persona. I mean, I've seen a video of him smashing an unbreakable window on a car with a big ball. Um, That's you know, I would I would do that if given the opportunity. I mean, come on, how unbreakable <laughs> this window is <laughs> in front of an audience of people. So you know, it's two sides to every coin. Yeah, I suppose. So, <laughs> um, so tell me about Canada's UFO. So. Uh, Jack Frost was part of the Special Projects Group. That's his actual fucking name? Yeah. Well, that's his, that's his kind of nickname. Hang on, I'm going to see. I guess maybe his name was John Carver Meadows Frost. Well, that's just as badass. Jack Frost. So Jack, is Jack from, a, a from, nickname from, from for SPG? John? If, yeah, you're named, is, yeah. if you're named John, people can call you jo- Jack as a nickname? That's Yeah, they can, yeah. I suppose they they can they can call you whatever they want they can call you Pepper Shaker McGee as a nickname if they wanted to but like <laughs> yeah that's a good name <laughs> well your like, name you logged into Zencaster what's your name Grubby 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 McMinty Bottom Grubby McMinty Bottom there we go yeah you can call yourself that I can call you that it doesn't matter <laughs> anyway so so Jack formerly known as John um, <laughs> he basically he surrounded himself by a collection of like of like minded maverick engineers. No, imagine a maverick engineer. It's like, I, that, 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 <laughs> but the hammer goes there, goes there. No, it doesn't. <laughs> he just put two sugars in his coffee. That kind of thing. Right. No. Um, so they had, they, they called their section the penthouse um, and they took over an executive wing of the administration building. Um, and they basically... They kind of they had security guards. They were like locked doors and special pass cards, um, and it kind of it, it was an experimental hangar where they they shared a space with other experimental aviation projects. Um, this is like Canada's version of Area Fifty One sort of thing, except yeah, yeah, exactly. Reverse. Exactly. We're, we're building the aliens. <laughs> exactly. exactly. <laughs> um, so it was expected that like any alien craft, we're not building aliens. That'd be <laughs> that would have, good. They, they might have. 
they might have. <laughs> so, um, you know, the um, uh, like obviously nuclear war. They were they they knew that if there was a nuclear exchange, a lot of air bases would get destroyed. So they needed to come up with aircraft that could take off on uh, roads or unprepared fields, or be able to take off without needing a runway. So, um, some uh, so the Avro car was the idea was this disc shaped aircraft could lift off and fly around like a frisbee without needing an. Uh, 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 an airfield to take off so that was the problem that it was solving was how do we how do we kind of have aircraft without without runway so i mean looking at photos of it and it's off the ground it did no it did take off um, so why, why didn't what what was wrong with it well we can get to that okay <laughs> <laughs> so, so um it, it had a oh, giant, at it. it looks like something out of star wars man it's cool it does it's really cool so yeah. i mean it's visionary because there was nothing else that looked like that in the history of, of anything before so it was re- you know i mean as much as it, it like failed as a project it's still like mind-blowing how ahead of its time it was um so it had three jet engines why not just why not just call it the avro car why call it the Avro the Avro car VZ9? Well, why not? Well, because why don't we just call re- you Jesse Ha? Well, no, Wait, why the, Avro, the, the Avro. Alley, the I mean, the Avro car the is memorable, right? But the VZ9 <laughs> is that to distinguish it from all the all the other? No, that 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 one had that model had leather seats and a heated steering wheel. So now ah, there it is. Okay, yeah. <laughs> So each engine. I don't. I don't. Sorry. I do not (laughs) grasp. I just a little mini rant. I do not understand corporate uh, the need to label their products a string of numbers and letters. I don't understand it at all. I don't. You know, like it's because they got lots of products and they just need to label them differently. They can label them differently. Of course, they can label them differently. They don't have to label them after numbers and letters. No one remembers that shit. No one. Hey, you got the new phone? Oh yeah, no, I got the I got the new. uh, Do you like a car? You've got to give it an actual name. Yeah, it's more memorable. The Firefly, yeah. the the Miggy, the Miggy Bug, the the. There's no cars called the Firefly or the Miggy Bug. Okay, well, still you'd remember that better than the you know better than the the, <laughs> the Toyota seven seven six nine V eight two nine four. You know who the hell's gonna what, and they but that's the thing. Products are named this proudly so. But, <laughs> the new Ford Miggy car, the perfect vehicle for people with low self esteem. You, <laughs> you would yeah. Yeah, okay, fine. Yes, but still, you'd remember the Miggy car rather than what was the string of numbers and letters I just ripped off. You don't remember that at all. It's gone already out of your mind. Yet no, a company still. What is it? The uh, VZ9 Avro car. No, <laughs> it rolls so off the tongue. Written, yeah, you've got that written down. It, it, <laughs> it rolls off the tongue on a jet of jet propelled air. <laughs> All right, sorry, rant over. I just think it's so ridiculous. The corporations <laughs> still do this to this day. How's your smart, you know, how's your, how's your smart car? Oh my, which my, my, my Toyota 2929-33,520A? Dot com. slash tilde. Right. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> Sorry. It's just, it bugs me. It bugs me. It bugs Not as bad as poorly named cars. Yeah. No, that's, well, you know, no. they do have some, there are some really bad cars. What names, was the name of the car? The Avro car. No, my car. Your car. The, yeah. I don't know the. Miggy bug? There it is. Well, I didn't say the Miggy bug. We, should, we should shoot. We should shoot a car <laughs> advert for the new Mig, Miggy bug. <laughs> he shoots. He scores. Another beautiful advert. ad. It's an ad. Adverts. Ad. I mean, it's we'll excitement. Be back. Yay! Ad. We'll be back after these messages of ads. Ads. So the the engine was disc shaped. They had three engines with separate fuel tanks for each engine, um, and the the triangular shape it pushed out at the end. So it was shaped like the spade on a playing card. Uh, okay. And for this reason, the Avro Ace was refer- was uh, the it was it was eventually called the Avro Ace, which is a reference to the Ace of Spades, if that makes sense. The the car itself, because I'm looking at. The, the Avro. If you look at it from the side, it was kind of like a really wonky looking. No, I'm I'm seeing top yeah. graph, top top down, and that they're circular in nature. They look like you. No, if you look at it from the side, not the top. Oh, oh I see. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, the craft was inherently. It still, looks like a, it still looks like a UFO. Yeah, it does. 
Doesn't the look craft, like it's the craft eight. was um, was inherently unstable in forward flight, <laughs> as the aerodynamic center of pressure was forward of the center of gravity. So it needed a really complicated mechanical stability augmentation system that was independent of the pilot's controls. And the uh, turbo rotor uh, w- had a large angular momentum, which acted as like a gyroscope to provide normal direction. So it was really complicated and really hard to fly because it was already. I we can make one not- today. We could try. I mean, if it took a lot of, it, you know, I mean, think about it. We've got the computer power and the processing power to do that in our phones today. Easily. I yeah. say as as if I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you, could, you make it sound so easy. Yeah. <laughs> you just press the button. Make it do with things. <laughs> the the, the um, programming button. <laughs> and it, was, it was manned by two people um, positioned in separate cockpits. Remember that Simpsons episode where Homer designs a car? <laughs> and the kids are in a separate pod. The Homer. It, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the Homer. <laughs> that was it. Exactly. Um, but it was so hard to fly and so sensitive to control that the test pilots had to acquire a special uh touch. Uh but eventually they, they were able to do a like a hands-off flight. They they did improve it. Um, but it was seen as uh it flying it was considered tricky and likened it was likened to balancing on a beach ball when you were flying it. <laughs> Yeah, that doesn't sound fun. That yeah. sounds fun. Honestly, it doesn't. It sounds fun and stupidly dangerous. But yeah, yeah. would you ride well, one? But in 1952, the design uh, was so advanced the Canadian Defence Research Board gave them an extra four hundred thousand dollars. And by 1953, they built like a, mo- a wooden mock-up of what it would look like. How much um, would that be worth today? Four hundred thousand uh, dollars. Four hundred thousand. I don't know, millions and billions. <laughs> Do like the Trump when Trump millions and millions and millions and millions like that. Did not, um, I didn't see that. Uh, and it was three, seen, it was three million. No, three no, million, no, which is I'm a bargain, seeing. really, for a UFO. Actually, no, four million. Sorry, four million. Uh, yeah, um, four, yeah, but it was four. it was it was seen as a bit too costly and really expensive as any defense project. That's actually so, not a lot of money if you think about it. It's not, but I mean... No, like you're developing a, a new form of aircraft and you're like, oh, wow, you're doing really well. Here's $4 million. Like that's... So, but this is why I mean, the, the Maverick engineers got wind <laughs> that, that, that people weren't happy with the funding. So on February the 11th, 1953, they leaked the project. Or well, I don't know if they... Nobody really knows who leaked it, but the, the story was leaked to the Toronto Star with images of the design um and five days later they uh, they said they, they basically got their funding and that they they said the mock-up model that the, the can basically the, the, the press went wild because they were like oh my god canada's got a flying saucer so the government could not fund it then <laughs> so, oh wow oh that's crazy yeah. oh. so if anyway there is an what do you what do you call them a maverick engineer basically if you're just an engineer that wears sunglasses and and has a two two right sugars there. in your coffee, and yeah. you don't put the hammer where it's supposed to go. Right then, uh, now you know what to do if you want funding. Yeah, there we go. But uh, but even You're despite welcome. despite that, eventually the funding didn't happen. But luckily, news of the 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 flying saucer the Canadians were building went south of the border, and U.S. defense experts visit visited. Hold on, sorry, hold on. start that again. So news of the UFO went south of the border. No, to the no, United before States. that, you're saying you said, did you say the funding didn't happen? I you said yeah, so did. eventually f- the funding did stop in the end. Oh, so the, so the media happened, then they funded it, and then they, once the media kind of the press died down, the media yeah, the yeah, they, they stopped it, funded it. Take it, take it once away. The, yeah. Until the the once I was, yeah, I was confused because you said it, yeah, you said. It but stopped. then the Americans decided to fund it. What? And the U.S. Air Force gave uh, them uh, seven hundred and fifty thousand U.S. dollars. Um, Again, to, to keep developing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, and they changed the name. You're going to love this, Jesse. They changed the name to Weapon System 606A. <laughs> <laughs> it fucking rolls right off the tug. <laughs> With a, another $2 million joint services contract. So basically, the money was pouring into it. So um, the US Air Force wanted them to build and test two of the Avro well, cars. Not, any better than the Miggy. Yeah, but so. <laughs> the Miggy bug. <laughs> um, uh, so the army was really interested in, in the Avro car as well. They, they could see what the, it was. Wasn't the just the Air Force. or the Canadian military? The the Canadian um, the American army. Um, okay. So the Air Force and the army were interested, um, and they were given uh, like extra funding. And uh, they they even boasted. Do you remember? Do you remember the Huey helicopter? 
famous for you know in like vietnam movies right the hui so basically the um one of the researchers who was building the avro car uh, he was at the um he was he was in in washington dc and he overheard a u.s army general say that the hui would be the last helicopter the army would buy since the all helicopters would be replaced by the avro car wow They're so confident they were and so, um, which is why they gave them less than a million dollars to continue. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, so the first work in Avro car rolled out of the Malton factory in May 1959. Okay. And it was There's tested. There's got to be footage. There's got to be footage. There is, there is footage. If you Google what? it, there's footage. So unfortunately, hot gas from the exhaust was mixing back with the intakes, uh, reducing the thrust, and it could only it only generated a, a small amount of, of uh, lift, so it couldn't take off properly so, the way so it wanted Say to. that again. Tell me. I'm, I'm actually so the hot that. air from the yeah. from the exhaust was being sucked back into the engines to lift it, so it just oh, made it couldn't take no. off properly. Because like, um, it takes off by, like about a foot off the ground. I'm watching it, um, and it's like, yeah, it gets about a foot off the ground, and that's about it. <laughs> yeah. It's um, kind of neat, though. It's really, it looks like a, it's a fucking flying saucer. Yeah. So in 1959. Oh, it was able to hover a meter off the ground. There we go. So in, I mean, that's still impressive. I can't hover a meter off the ground. Can you? We'll get to that, actually. I was going to mention how that's, like, not <laughs> just by myself. Oh, you mean, no, no. Okay, no. <laughs> David Blaine can. <laughs> no, I don't mean just, like, telekinesis. Just to stop yeah. everybody with my, my mind powers. <laughs> no, but, like, it's, it's, okay, so... There was a guy who we have we have uh, what are they um, drones that can lift humans now and there's a guy who who flew across the English Channel he had to stop halfway across to refuel but then he continued uh, just on a drone like a, a personally made drone to to suit him but he's just standing there flying a single man not in a craft not in an airplane or a helicopter or a UFO just standing on a drone flying. And no the way. world and the world went meh, whatever. <laughs> well, they, I mean, what seen... the fuck? We have we can fly now, and nobody gives a shit. <laughs> yeah, because what? also because like they're not going to let everyone do it. You can, I know, like in sci-fi films, it's really cool to have people flying around cities, like you know, Inspector Gadget style. But a lot of people are going to die. Sure, and that's, me, like... and that's not me making a threat. That's just. <laughs> This is gonna happen. No, but I'm just I'm just saying we've been wanting to fly since the dawn of time, and now we can do it, and nobody cares. It's yeah. crazy. You should, because uh, I mean, all the cool stuffs on the ground. <laughs> I'm watching. I'm watching the the Avro, the Avro Car VZ Dash Nine. Fuck that. Do you know what? If if this podcast gets as big as uh, Joe Rogan, um, not um, I mean, like not not the size of his body of his show. <laughs> Um, right. Thank you <laughs> for that. Um, just to clarify, um, then uh, we will. One thing we'll do is we'll build you an Avro car, and then you can just live stream as you try and fly it around Halifax. How does that sound? I, I mean, it looks really goofy how it's fly. It just wobbles, or it's it's the most goofy looking. You should see this thing fly, man. It's <laughs> <laughs> in, in 1959 on the 29th of September, the first attempt to hover was made with it tethered to the ground. The vehicle became airborne, an uncontrollable roll and pitch coupled oscillation started the forced the three wheels onto the ground and the pilot uh, WD Spud Pataki immediately shut down all engines. So basically, it was kind of like, you know, when you drop a coin and it does that, whoa, 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 and before it hits the ground, it just started doing that <laughs> <laughs> with him inside. So, yes, yes. Um, so <laughs> they. <laughs> That's how you know if they're taking off or landing. Exactly. <laughs> oh, well, his, his vomit hits his little pod window <laughs> of the Homer. <laughs> so. Um, they they were determined to fix it, but the funding ran out in March 1961, and the proposals they couldn't get another four hundred thousand dollars. No, I know, and the proposals <laughs> for the modified design weren't accepted, um, and uh, the Avro car and all related projects were officially cancelled in December 1961 by the U.S. military, um, and they, they 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 tried to keep it going, but it just didn't work. But the thing was as well. Um, they kind of capped the project 
um and and also around this time they were developing other kind of um airplanes that could take off and lift and uh, have you ever heard of you the, the harrier jump jet heard of it yeah so that was a, a british jet that could do vertical takeoff that was, oh i've seen that that's cool first time i saw that was yeah, a yeah. movie uh it was in 1967 it was with arnold schwarzenegger was, yeah yeah so um that was, was a true oh my god what's the name of it True Lies. True Lies. True Lies. Yeah, yeah. Love that movie. So that was, that was a British design from the 60s. So they did it, but it was just a, um, you know, I mean, it's an amazing feat of engineering. It, it looks like a normal jet and the engine's kind of pointed down and then it gets up in the air and then they twist. It, it kind of, it looks like, you know, like the, the jets they use in like the Quinjet, is it from the Avengers where it takes yeah. off and goes, it was that, but they, they built it in the 60s. All right, that's impressive. <laughs> Which is amazing. So, so it's a Harrier jump jet is impressive. And that was that was in service in the British military for decades because um, it could just take off. Uh, they could fit more planes on aircraft carriers, basically. Um, so the, the, that was one that worked, but it wasn't saucer-shaped because of all these problems that came up. Um, so the the second Avro car, they'd built two. So the second one had logged like 75 hours of um flight time but even you said they built they built two what avro cars they, they built two avro cars but the avro car vz-10 no <laughs> they just built two models and they, they they got good flight time 75 hours of flights but it was seen as a failure uh eventually it could never lift itself more than a few feet off the ground i know it's so silly looking you should just go um, it, you should, it couldn't like go it, very fast at all. um it was like a it's uh, it's so, so the, wobbly. <laughs> it, it was. It was. It was also produced unbearable heat and, <laughs> and a screaming, screaming exhaust noise that made it impractical for the military. So you just got people sweating and they're deaf and they're wobbling <laughs> into the into like the theater of conflict, hoping to to win a war. <laughs> it's like, I'm not, oh my god! It's so wobbly. It's so cute. This is the cutest thing the military has ever made in Canada, for sure. The, and do you know there's a full scale replica of the Avro car that was prepared for a, a, a 2002 production uh, Avro car, Source of Secrets from the Past, uh, which sounds saucy. Sexiest. Did you say saucy secrets from the past? <laughs> not Source of Secrets. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be so funny. <laughs> Just like a, a horny story of this secret maverick engineer. <laughs> Saucy anyway. secrets from the past. <laughs> Jack Frost was a maverick engineer. <laughs> Keep going. I'm not going to uh, stop you. This is great. <laughs> Linda was a... Uh, it's a bear. <laughs> an ordinary brown bear <laughs> with a taste for human flesh little did she know she would be swept off her feet by his saucer <laughs> <laughs> it sounds sexual but I don't know how to make that it's just a man <laughs> flying a saucer into a bear <laughs> Anyway, um, and it now resides at the Western Canada <laughs> Aviation Museum in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Is it an actual working model? No, it's, it's, it's a replica, but you can oh. go and see a replica of it. That's well, We should do that. Add that to our list, our road trip list. I know. So if you want right. to go and see the Avro car, I mean, I, I'm, as much as we're making fun of it, is it, it, you know, visionary. I mean, they didn't know it wasn't going to work until they built it, really. I suppose, yeah. All right, I do that. love the little bubbles, though. It does look like a little frog toy. I know it's so cute, right? Like, <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's and adorable. there's, there's. I don't know if you found the pictures. Some of them, they've got them flying, and they've got cannons on them on the top somehow. <laughs> As if they're like, like flying, flying saucers with cannons attached, glued to the top. That's amazing. I bet, I bet we could make this today. I bet we could make this the way they envisioned it back then, but with today's you say technology. We. I don't know who we are, but today's today's technological engineer, Marvel smart guy. I, I bet you could build. I bet you could probably build. Uh, not me, was, not was, you and I. No, but you think about the noise <laughs> and the heat. I bet they could probably build uh, a battery powered version, like a based on drone stuff. Oh, they sure. might actually fly better because you could probably. The problem was well, they yeah. they were working with like nineteen fifties jet engines. You could probably create something with like you could have a ton of uh, mini kind of turbines all the way across the bottom, like you know drone stuff, and probably make something that could work. Maybe they've got one. Maybe that's what uh, the the states keep saying they see and they can't identify. Maybe our, our our new version of the Avro VZ-9, the yeah. new Avro VZ-12.4 
three. Or oh, that what was the one you came up with? The Miggle Bug. The Miggy. Miggy Bug. The, the Miggy Bug. Yeah. The new Honda Miggy Bug. <laughs> you won't like any of the colors. <laughs> There's a, you can actually buy, you know, those model plane kits. I used to love those when I was a kid. I used to love gluing my fingers to my face when I was a kid. Um, when you were they've a got, kid. They've got one for I the Avro. I seen you do it last week. <laughs> Jesse, we need hot water. <laughs> <laughs> did you do it again? He did it again. Okay. He did it again. Yeah. <laughs> I remember once actually um, uh, doing like little model kits and I remember gluing a part of it to my fingernail and I couldn't get it off. So I had like a tiny plane seat on my fingernail. <laughs> Or some that was, air that was last pump. month too, right? That was, was, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> but I'm gonna, I'm gonna get an Avro car model kit. Oh, that'd be cool. We should build one. We should. Yeah, that'd be nice to make and sell. Yeah, wonderful. For, well, have you have you enjoyed stars. learning about Canada's flying saucer? I, I have. Just, I just this, realized there wasn't a lot of politics in this, but no, um, that's. I mean, it's military and that's <laughs> political in nature, right? It's that it's, America it's, got involved at some point. In the end. Yeah, that's yeah. something. That's that's military. I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> the Avro car. This has been the story of the Avro car, the Miggy Bug, and other vehicles oh, no, no, with no, no, strange no. names. We're playing the video over top of this. Keep going. Okay. <laughs> it looks it's so funny. Oh my god! Yes. There we go. No, you gotta do this. <laughs> Viewer, play this. Just find a YouTube clip and play it over this. It's amazing. <laughs> well, what well, is trying to fly? <laughs> <laughs> sorry sorry audience <laughs> that was just for jesse oh my god no seriously please do it rewind and find a youtube clip it's so worth it <laughs> it's so fucking worth it oh my god that was no, so funny so- have a, have a wonderful day, everyone. Uh, oh, thank you. Oh, call to action. Mike, uh, so I have a call to action for everybody. Please uh, take out some crayons, some colored pencils, or do this digitally however you want and draw uh, draw your own version of what you think the Miggy Bug looks like. Think of like the Homer, but it's your own car. The Miggy yeah, Bug. The Miggy it, can, bug. F- it can fly. It could be on the ground. It can do whatever you want. Or have your kids draw them. Send them into us at CanadianPoliticsIsBoring at gmail.com. And if we like them, we'll put them up on our social media and we'll talk about them in an episode. Canada's late, all of Canada's latest technology <laughs> in a small car. Yeah. <laughs> the Miggy Bug. All right. Uh, that's that's it. If we, uh, I'll, be, I'll be surprised if we get a single one of that ridiculous. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, does, uh, I love that it's almost like a kid's TV show. And why don't you design your car and send it in? <laughs> Our favorite design will win a Tamagotchi (laughs) or something. They don't make those anymore. That was a really fun episode. That was that was super fun. More of those. More fun. Yay, fun things. Yeah, like, yeah. Like fun things. <laughs> yeah, fun things. Well, thank you very much. Oh, and um, fun things. This, are fun. This, this is the last episode before our uh, spy season kicks in. Right. Oh so, yeah. I'm looking forward um, to that. That's going to be a lot of fun. So uh, I'm, I can't wait to record those episodes. I can't wait for us to uh, do those. Um, the spy season is is going to be the daily shows for ten days. Right. Um, and hopefully we'll blow your socks off metaphorically and literally. And literally. Well, I don't know how we would do. How do you blow somebody's socks off? My for so I became friends with. I think I might have told this in a previous episode, but in case I didn't, I became friends with my gym teacher in Calgary. Uh, Jeffrey, Jeffrey Hazahovich. Hey, Jeffrey, if you're listening, you're probably not. We don't talk anymore. Uh, so, <clears throat> although we talk now and then, I'll message him <laughs> like once a year. I'll say hi. What's going on? He became he he, he graduated. From, anyway, that's neither here nor there. One time for for a Christmas gift, uh, I you know how you get uh, mittens for your kids, and and the mittens have a piece of string that runs up one uh, one length of of. Uh, so you don't lose them. So it like runs up the one sleeve and then oh, threw down your other sleeve and attaches to your other arm. Well, we made him a pair of socks. My brother and I made him a pair of socks that did that. So you're right. You put on the right sock and, and there's a string that's attached to that sock that runs all the way up your right pant leg and then down your left, left pant leg and attaches to your left sock. So you never lose your socks. This, this, this Wow. <laughs> Well, they was just talking about the amazing invention of a saucer, and, and you had that. Right? 
Yeah. I could have been an inventor. Just saying. Yeah. Yeah. This is a long episode, but it was worth it. It was a good episode, <laughs> I think. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I hope we patented that because someone's going to go and make those now. Please do. For the love of God, please somebody make that. <laughs> <laughs> Just give me a tiny credit anywhere. Just uh, go on Ellen. You measure her up so the string is just long enough that once they put the socks on, they can never take them off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> cool. Well, uh, this has been wonderful. I look uh, forward to seeing all of your Miggy Bug Miggy creations. Bugs. Yeah. Please Thank email you us. Your, I'm going to do one. I'll okay. do one. All right. Miggy Bug. You're go- oh, you're going to design one. I'm going to design one. I'm, I can't wait. I'm, I'm uh, very much looking forward to it. The new Miggy Bug from Honda. The car you don't want to be seen in because of the name, the colors, and just how it looks. It's a bit weird. Um, That's all I got.